works, right? Okay, I'm just kind of exiting out and I can maybe try and test it on my own. And we'll see. We'll see, I am hoping that I can hear me. Out and I can maybe try and test All right, we have volume. Awesome, awesome. All right, so those of you that were on here for two o'clock, my apologies, it was crazy. I was using a different stand and it was somehow interfering with the mic and crazy. Um, so I'm gonna start over. This whole video really came about from the fact that there are so many of you that are trying this technique. Many of you are having a great time with it and are having no problems. And then some of you are having some difficulties. So I've tried to give answers along the way, but I've also been doing some research and trying to come up with some answers. So I'm going to try and address those. If you happen to be popping on here, um, bless your heart for hanging in there through the technical difficulties. I've got an iPad open. I can answer your questions as you go, but I have written down on my cheat sheet questions that people were asking as we went. So the first thing that I want to talk about are the inks themselves. I am using alcohol inks, which are alcohol based. The name kind of implies that as we go. I have used successfully three different types of, or three different brands of alcohol ink. I've used the Ranger line by Tim Holtz. This is the one that you can find most commonly at um, craft stores like Michael's and those sorts of things. This is also the line that I carry in my shop, queenbeecreationshome.com, because it comes in little three packs of colors. And very often, if you're just trying this out, that's all you want is maybe two or three colors to be able to play with that. Um, you can also get pinata, which look very similar. And then I also have um, T-Rex that I use. And I have tons of ink colors. So this is just my T-Rex line. I've got another similar box with, with my Ranger, not because of the ornaments and requiring them for that, but because I do paintings with them. So I have a lot of different colors just because of that. So the thing that you have to bear in mind is that these love slick surfaces, so they love the glass, they love plastic too. Oh, Sheila, you hung in, honey. All right, you're back with me. Good, good, good. So the inks are, because they're alcohol based, it does mean that when you add more ink to it, it's going to affect the look of the ink that's already there. So this one, which was a test one from the previous lost videos that are deleted, never to be seen. Um, mm. This has got one color in it, which is Wild Plum by um, Ranger. If I add another color, let me add in maybe a yellow. So one that we're going to be able to see. Shake them up before you use them. You are going to see that even if I love this patterning, right? If I love the look of this and the patterning, Adding another color in is going to shift the color already in there because the alcohol that's in that new ink is going to react with the ink that's already in there. Now I could just let my ink kind of roll down in there and move around. I could just kind of shake it, rotate it until it stops moving or I can spritz it around using some canned air. Now, the difference with the canned air is that rather than kind of striping and maybe just lines, it's going to spread the ink out. So it's going to color your ball more and you're going to get pale color. Right now, wherever you see um, clear glass that there's no ink, when we add our acrylic, that's going to be white. Where we have like faint color on there, we're going to get that color. Now, it may be very um, intense. It may be very pale, depending upon how much we've spread that ink out. But that's, that's the beauty of this, is that you get those organic kind of looks to this. Okay, let's add one more color. We'll add a darker purple. We'll, we'll go with 
We'll go with an eggplant, shall we? I, I don't know what these color combinations look like. I'm just playing. But here's the difference. When you turn these upside down, they already have, they're kind of set up that you'll get one drop coming out. That's all you need, right? In any one spot, because there's a lot of intensity to these. And as you add them, you don't want to have big globs of them. Now you can see on this one that that dark purple sat all up at the top. If I wanted it down in the bottom, then I need to do one drop straight down. Don't roll it down the edge of your ball. Just one drop straight in, and then I can blow that around. But you can see how dominant that darker eggplant became, right? So let's just leave that. Now I have them standing in containers like this. And one of the things I'm looking for is whether or not there's so much ink that it starts to pool. If it does, you can turn it upside down, get rid of some of that ink, or you can keep blowing it around. But anytime that you go to spray, like this seems like nothing's moving. But if I spray again, there's ink moving. Too early to add my, my acrylic because the acrylic is now a liquid going to a liquid, it's gonna to start to merge with and, and move around those inks. So too early to do that. You have to make sure that there's nothing moving. Usually I'm doing a series. So, you know, I, I just put line them up and as much as I've got them sitting up in the plastic cups right now, because I wasn't doing a lot of them, I will often just have old egg cartons and I'm just putting them into the egg cartons to be able to, to dry. It just props them up and, and it's fine. With, with the inks, um, the colors are pretty much translucent, but you can get metallics that are not. So let's maybe, let's add a little bit of I had one out. Okay, here's brass. Now you'll hear that there's a little ball in there because the metallics sink. You have to shake these up really well. They're not going to move the same way. It doesn't matter what video I do. I can't get things open. Oh, we might not be using this one. Oh my goodness gracious. Do I have a set of pliers over here? loosened it up. So I just want to show you that how the metallics look. But again, with any of these, less is more, even with the metallics. So I'm just putting one little drop in each of those places. You can see it starting to roll down the ball. And now I'm going to just kind of <laughs> roughly move it a little bit. And then I'm going to put that off to the side to sit. So we are not using a lot of ink. And I get, I get the feeling that a lot of you are using it like paint. It's like two or three little drops of any one color and then get it to move, right? If you put them on the side and it's puddling. No, you have way, way too much ink. Turn it upside down, get rid of it. You're gonna be waiting forever for that to dry. It's got alcohol and the alcohol evaporates. That's what we're waiting for, but it's only got this little tiny hole to evaporate out of. And if, if it happens to be um, muggy out or something, it's gonna take longer. If you turn it like this to try and get it to dry, you've now blocked the evaporation process. So leave it open, rotate it around so that you get movement. You can, you can have some of your color moving around and shifting for you, okay? So I also had people asking about glass balls, which mostly is what I do 
but versus plastic balls, right? This is plastic. You can see my, my thumb going in. So this one, not. Um, I don't have any problem as well with the plastic. So if you're having difficulty with that, um, I would say it's not the plastic versus glass that's the issue. It's something that you're doing along the way. So I'm hoping that this addresses some of the questions because both of these and, and any of the samples that I'm showing you, apart from the ones that I'm doing right in front of you, um, have been done over a year ago. So I wanted to pull old balls, <laughs> old balls, um, to show you how well they've lasted, right? So I don't have any pooling, we've got great color, we've got good definition, like even on the plastic, right? So glass versus plastic, if you're somebody that because you've got young children or you've got cats, <laughs> you need plastic in your home, you're okay with that. So part of it is make sure that it dries, the alcohol ink dries, you're not waiting a day for it to, if your alcohol is not drying in a day, you have got gallons of alcohol in there. There's just way too much. I had people asking what kind of acrylic paint. Now I will say this, when I first did these, I did not realize that the type of acrylic made a difference. So I lucked out. Um, I had a wonderful viewer who said that um, they had watched someone that tested different acrylics and that not all acrylics are born equal. So um, this one is what I bought because I do classes. And so it's easiest when I've got a big group of 10 people here and they're all doing their balls together um, to use something this big. The brand name, which happens to be Meden, M-E-E-D-E-N, and once we're done this video, I'll drop in a link to all of the different products and the names so that you can reference it. It's not there now because this is the fifth iteration of this video because the other ones had no sound. Um, so I will drop that in for you. But what becomes important is that this is, this is a titanium white, it's an acrylic paint, but it is studio acrylic, which means there are three different kinds of acrylic paint. One is a heavy body, which is a thick paint. Um, one is a soft body, softer paint. And then one is fluid, which if you saw my paint pouring, that's like a pour bowl. It's, it's very liquid. So you'll see with this one, look how thick that is, right? That's just going to sit right up. It's just wonderfully thick. It's got a nice thin nozzle, which makes it great for putting into the balls. But that's why um, in my video, you saw that I just thinned it out a little bit. And I only thin it out enough to be able to get it to move inside the ball. Okay. So I have, I'll drop in a link to Amazon. This is where I picked this up. It doesn't seem to be there right now. And again, some of you are American, some of you are Canadian. So, you know, you're going to go .com versus .ca. I mean, whatever. Okay. Um, but my sense is, is if your acrylic paint is pulling your alcohol inks off, they're not dry and that this is too wet. So the combination. So I'm just doing kind of one pump. Let me see if you can see the, the blob down on the bottom. See that little white blob? That's the paint. And if I, and I should have had a cloth over here. I'm getting the white acrylic all over my fingers. So all over my, my ball, it just washes off. Um, if I try and shake this around, it's not moving all that easily, right? I can't move it that much. And I don't want to add 3 million gallons of paint to, to there. It'd be a really heavy ball. So I am doing one little, I would say that's a quarter of a teaspoon. And just seeing if that's enough to move. And I do it this way so that I'm not adding any more than I need to. Because I, I do want it to ultimately dry. If I need to add more paint, then I will. If I need to add a little bit more water, then I will. But you can see already how much that starts to bring out the color. That didn't look like there was much. So 
That's one of the things to learn is that because these are really translucent, don't keep adding more inks into it. Um, it, it doesn't go super dark. It's the white that really um, pulls in and gives it a backing. And, you know, sometimes you're looking at your, your, your ornament and you've got the inks and you're going, oh my gosh, that looks like nothing, right? It doesn't look great at all. And then you add in the white and you're going, what? damn, that's nice, <laughs> right? It's, it's fun when we're doing the classes because people are looking kind of going, oh, it didn't even look like much. I hated it. And then the white just made it pop. So I added a little bit more because I was getting tired of shaking. But you just keep keep it moving, right? Now here's the other thing is once I have it all covered and you can see I've pretty much got that white all the way around, we're not done because that paint, that white paint is still wet. It's still going to move. So I will sit it in my cup or on my, my egg cup, whatever I happen to have. And I will leave it there for about 15 minutes. Then I'll come and I'll rotate it. And then I'll rotate it again. And then I'll rotate it this way. And then I'll rotate it this way. I keep it moving so that it just keeps coating all of my ball, all of my ornament, so that I still get that kind of coverage. And I think that if your acrylic paint was peeling or lifting, I think it's because it was too thin of an acrylic. I think it was, was maybe the softer acrylic as opposed to the heavy bodied acrylic. And um, that's what would do it. Um, do you guys wanna see what this one with the brass that we added? Just while I'm talking, I'll just keep, I'll just keep playing. I'll add, I'll do another one. Um, so part of the difference is that The acrylic makes a difference. If you find that you are having issues with um, the ink not staying put, you could put the alcohol ink in and then you could spray it. So you could use like a, a you know, from Verithane, like a, a diamond coat spray or like from Krylon, this is my preferred um, one in inside the balls, which is a clear glaze. Now I don't usually do that at all, but if you're having trouble, go ahead and do it. Who, who cares? Nobody's judging you. Um, I did do this. If you saw the video where I used the alcohol links and then the mirror effect spray, I did this in between because when I was experimenting with it, the mirror effect spray must have some alcohol in it because it just wiped all of the alcohol inks completely out right? It just took them away, period. Um, and I lost all color. So I had to seal them with a spray. So once they were in there, I sealed them inside with a spray. So a couple of light squirts. So I did a light squirt, left it for five minutes, came back, did another one just to make sure that I had the coverage that I needed. I'm afraid I'm going to bang this on the table as I'm shaking. And um, I think I have lots of paint in there. I just need a little bit of water and that's like an eighth eighth of a teaspoon that I added maybe so I'm moving this around but you can see those colors and that was um, the teak wood with the lettuce and the turquoise and we added a little bit of that brass right so I will use um, for that one for the mirror effect I had to I had to add in the clear, right? To be able to protect it so it didn't react with the other. Sheila, you know what? There is no bad combination. I mean, these, these things, I've got one spot. So here's the thing. I've got one spot right there. Can you see that it's clear? But I've got a lot of paint in there. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to, before I add more into it or I shake my arm like crazy, I'm just going to turn it. <laughs> I'm going to turn it and let that paint flow into that spot first. If it turns out that I don't have enough paint to flow in there, then, then I'll add an extra little bit. But, you know, gravity is your friend, as long as you're using it. 
if you leave them in one position and you don't rotate them as they're drying, like, you know, every 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever, then you're going to end up with a really light coating and a really heavy coating. They're going to feel weighted wrong, but it works perfect. Now, I did have somebody ask, alcohol inks are susceptible to UV rays. So when I do a painting, I do spray it with a UV coating before I pop it, pop it into the frame because I don't know where people are going to hang it. And, you know, we know that, that a lot of art fades over time, right? So I haven't had an issue really. I mean, these are a year old and they're still really bright, really gorgeous. I don't know what they're going to look like 10 years from now, 20 years from now, but I'm not all that worried about it. However, if you are, you could spray it with something like this, which is Krylon UV archival spray, right? So it's an archival quality varnish. It's not going to yellow. It protects against the UV rays. This is not cheap. So I don't know um, how anxious I would be um, about the ornaments given that usually they're not spending a lot of time in direct sunlight. They're out on people's trees. Um, you know, if people had them five to 10 years, then I think that they've still gotten their money's worth out of whatever you're selling the product for while I'm talking, might as well do this guy. Um, but it's, it's, it's your call. I think if you are a seller, then, um, you know, you're not going to use tons of that and it's going to go pretty far, but it depends upon what you're selling your ornaments for and what kind of money you get out of, out of it. You know, what, what your return is more than anything else. So I will say I, I have some color combinations I like better than others, but I've never hit a color combination that I don't like. Um, ornament shapes. That was another question. So I, I mean, these are easy to find the lentil ones, the flat, the flatter disc ones are easy to find. Um, they work great. The only difference with any of the weird shapes is, and, and there you probably want to use the canned air to be able to blow your, um, alcohol into different spots, right? So that you don't end up just with um, all of your ornaments having clear glass in one particular little area or something. So if you're using the canned air and um, I usually buy it by the case because I'm doing classes, but I will say I have, I have found um, canned air in dollar stores, right? Because people use it to blow out and clean their keyboards of their computers, which, you know, considering I have a case of it, you'd think that maybe I would do that. <laughs> Um, I just use it for crafting. So this is that one. So you can see this one has a lot more white space, but you can see by the white that we didn't have bleeding of the alcohol inks, right? They didn't color that. And so the inks were dry and it meant as well that I hadn't blown tons and tons of the color around on this one. Remember I let it roll a little bit more and I just did short bursts so that I would have a little bit more white space. If I, um, if I put new ink in and I blew it around and blew it around and blew it around and added more ink and blew it around and blew it around and blew it around, it would all be totally covered in color. So, um, both look, both look beautiful, right? This one is all covered in color, but you, you can see some of the splitting that happens. Look at that. This one, we've got lots of beautiful color. This is that eggplant. So it goes like that deep kind of rusty color, which is kind of cool. Okay. So, uh, so the UV spray and sealers. Okay. I think those are most of the questions that you guys have asked me in, um, in just typing after all of the comments. I think that the most important thing to remember is um, less ink is, is your friend. Don't use it like a paint. It goes a long, long way. 
So even though they seem expensive for how how big they are, right? Because they're tiny little bottles, um, they they last you forever because you really don't need a lot of ink. So don't overuse the ink. Let it do its thing. Let it let it move and glide over your surface. Um, use a heavy body acrylic. Don't use a thin one. Don't use a pour pouring um, acrylic. Thin this out a little bit with water, not a lot. Use, use, your, use your muscles to move it around more than you're using the water to move it around. I'm just adding like an eighth of a teaspoon at a time just to loosen it up to be able to move it. But, you know, if we've got a spot um, then that we don't get, oh, I know I still have lots of paint in there. Use gravity. Let gravity move that paint around for you. Um, so if the shaking gets a little bit too much, but look at, look at the green one. Look at, look at the details on there. That one, this one was with the T-Rex colors and I used three kind of dark colors together. So one was, um, sea glass, autumn yellow and monsoon, which is kind of like a gray and, uh, it's just a, a lovely kind of moody sort of sort of ball. You can get an infinite number of looks, but I think less ink, heavy bodied, uh, heavy bodied acrylic, and you're probably good to go either on plastic or glass. Both work. Good luck, you guys. I will always be answering your questions when I see them come up, but I hope that this really helped people be able to understand a little bit more, um, the organic nature of the inks, they're going to keep moving each other around. As soon as you add a new color in that alcohol is going to reactivate what's already there. So don't look to be able to get set established patterns. You'll never get the same look twice. That's the beauty of it. Go with it. Thanks for tuning in. Good luck. Hope you, uh, hope you all jump in, give it a try. Even if it hasn't been working for you, perfect this. You're going to love it. I promise. Take care. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.